Senator Ted Cruz, how are you, my friend? Mark, it's great to be with you, as always. It's always a pleasure. Well, you know, apparently Thursday is the day we determine whether the Second Amendment is going to be amended by a majority vote on the floor of the Senate, or whether you and some other brave souls are going to be able to slow this down. Do I have this about right? Well, that, that's exactly right, and I think we should stand together and defend the Bill of Rights. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not complicated. The first responsibility of every member of the Senate should be to defend the Constitution, defend the liberties of Americans. And, and unfortunately, we're seeing a number of politicians who, who are trying to take advantage of the horrific crime in Sandy Hook and use it to push legislation that would undermine the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms of law-abiding citizens across this country. You know, you know the Constitution as well as anyone. You've been in front of the Supreme Court and so forth. I'm very troubled by this notion that an election determines whether we have a Constitution or not, and that a simple majority or even a 60-vote majority in the Senate determines if we have a Bill of Rights. If this is so damn popular, Senator, if 90% of the American people want X, Y, or Z, well, why don't they get their two-thirds votes in both houses and send it to the states so the rest of us can participate? Well, that's exactly right. And, and as you know, the, the Constitution, and especially the Bill of Rights, exists to protect our rights, especially when there is passion and emotion of the majority seeking to take those away. That's the entire purpose of it. And... At the same time, there are a lot of members of the Senate that, that, that have a view, uh, well, that was expressed to me directly in the Judiciary Committee, where, where the senior senator from California, uh, Diane Feinstein, expressed considerable displeasure that I asked her about the Second Amendment and how her bill comported with the Second Amendment. And, and she said to me, Mark, she said, don't you understand? It's Congress's job to pass legislation. And then we leave it to the courts to determine if it's constitutional or not. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and sadly enough, I, I do understand. That has been the attitude of Congress for the past couple of decades, and that's how we've gotten in the mess we're in right now. But, Every but one you know of us what? takes you know, an oath to the Constitution. But you know what, Senator? I'm watching these Republicans one by one, and, and it's very frustrating for me and millions of people who listen to this program to watch this. Just get peeled off, peeled off. There's a... Up or down vote, up or down vote. We're talking about the Bill of Rights. We're talking about the Constitution. What do you mean up or down vote? Up or down vote on what? Is everything up for grabs? That's exactly right. And it, it's also, it's reflective of part of the problem in Washington, which is when uh, th there is an event like, like the horrific shooting in Sandy Hook, you get a lot of elected officials that r run out and they want to do something, they want to show how tough they are. And, and the Democrats have used it as an excuse to push their anti-gun agenda that they had long before Sandy Hook. And, and much of what gets done, I mean, it, it's Shakespearean in the sense of being full in, of sound and fury and, and signifying nothing. None of this legislation that's being introduced by the Democrats would do anything to stop violent crime. And if, and if the Senate wanted to act to prevent violent crime, I think we should target violent felons, and at the same time safeguard the rights of law-abiding citizens. So, for example, in the year 2010, there were over 70,000 people who applied for background checks to buy guns. They were turned down. Of those, over 15,000 were felons or fugitives. Out of those 15,000, Mark, the Obama Justice Department prosecuted only 44 of them. 44 out of 15,000 felons and fugitives who were trying to illegally purchase a gun. Now, if we're interested in stopping violent crime, I think we ought to be putting law enforcement resources into going after felons that are trying to illegally buy guns instead of stripping away the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens who've never committed a crime and are very unlikely ever to do so. And you know, Senator, it's my understanding that prosecutions, federal prosecutions of gun crimes in our three biggest cities, New York, L.A., and Chicago, are down. Now, if this is true... I mean, this is pretty incredible, uh, considering that they want to expand rules that are basically going to apply to 99.9% .9 of law-abiding citizens. Uh, th th that's right. And, and, Mark, you and I have both worked in the U.S. Justice Department. We understand that when the federal government makes it a priority 
to go after violent criminals, that, that's when it's doing its job. That, that's when law enforcement is doing its job. And, and this legislative fight is not about stopping violent criminals. It is about extending the power of the federal government to limit and, and I think ultimately take away our right to keep and bear arms. You know, the big push is for what they call universal background checks. But what they don't typically tell you, and they say 90% of the American people want this. Well, what they don't typically tell you is the Department of Justice has said the only way you can have universal background checks work is to establish a federal gun registry, a national list the federal government keeps of every firearm owned by every law-abiding citizen in this country. And as you know, a registry is... Number one, inconsistent with the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, but number two, historically, has been the predicate for taxation, uh, regulation, and ultimately for confiscation. And and that's what this fight is all about, is they want a registry because they want to limit the liberties of law-abiding citizens, and that, that doesn't make sense, and it's not consistent with our Constitution. And, you know, uh, when you say things like this, or when I say things like this, or somebody else, uh, oh, there's the black helicopter guys, goes the vice president of the United States, like we're going to take their guns. I don't know. They took our health care. There's a lot of stuff they want to take. Well, there is. And, and let's be clear, the proponents of this have not been terribly secretive about their views. Uh, Diane Feinstein, who's introduced the assault weapons ban, She said publicly on the record she would like to say, Mr. America, Mrs. America, I'm going to take your guns. And she's already said if she had the vote, she would confiscate guns right now. That has been her public position. You know, John Lott, who, as you know, is is one of the leading academics in the country studying the issue of guns and violence, was on the University of Chicago faculty along with Barack Obama. He reports Obama, when he was on the law faculty, saying that he doesn't think anyone should have the right to own a gun. And, and so these fears are driven by the, 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 the very explicit policy agenda, and it's an agenda that is not consistent with the protections of the Bill of Rights. And what is the point of having universal registration with tens of millions of Americans and even more weapons uh, on, some, uh, on some computer, when in fact, as you and I well know, we call people criminals because they evade the law, not because they comply with the law. I mean, that is exactly right. But remember, we have an attorney general who is on film saying he wants to, quote, brainwash Americans to hate mm-hmm. guns. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the chief law enforcement officer of the United States. I mean, their agenda, it, it is not directed at stopping violent criminals. How else can you explain out of 15,000 felons and fugitives... They only prosecute 44. They're not focused on what the priority should be, which is stopping the bad guys from hurting innocents. Instead, they're focused, and I would note, you know, I mean, I've drafted legislation that would provide resources so we can go after felons and fugitives to protect the innocent. None of us want to see our kids, our our loved ones, the victims of violent crime, but you and I understand that, that the way you stop violent crime is you target violent criminals. You don't disarm the law-abiding population. You know, Senator, I think what the left is doing, what the liberals are doing here, and unfortunately a number of Republicans are falling for it, is they're posing as law enforcement, as tough law and order types. That's why they're pushing this legislation. Really, there's no connection between what took place in Connecticut in some of the things that they're pushing. But I think they want to be able to say they're tough on crime, they're tough uh, law enforcement and law and order types, when in fact, as you point out, this is an abstraction. That's all this is. Well, and it's a pattern across the board where consistently the left believes in government power and in stripping the constitutional protections of the Bill of Rights from the citizenry. So we just had a big filibuster on drones that I stood side by side with Rand Paul, and we forced the Obama administration to admit that the Fifth Amendment restricts their ability to use a drone to kill a U.S. citizen on U.S. soil. They didn't want to admit that. Just this morning we had a hearing uh, on campaign finance reform where the left wants to muzzle the private citizens and put government in charge of speech. The pattern is the same, which is they consistently support government power 
at the expense of the liberties of the citizens protected in the Bill of Rights. And I think it is wrong every time they do it, and I think we have an obligation to defend the Constitution every time they try. Is there going to be a filibuster, uh, or does it depend on what they offer, or what, what are you thinking? Well, what Rand Paul and Mike Lee and I have said, and a number of other senators, is that we will use any procedural means necessary to oppose consideration of a bill that would abridge the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, and in particular to insist upon a 60-vote threshold. Now, tonight Harry Reid has filed cloture so that on Thursday we'll have a vote, and right now he has to get 60 votes to, to proceed to the bill. If he gets 60 votes, then we will move to consideration of whatever bill he decides to move to, and then we will have yet another debate on the merits of the bill, and if it undermines the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, again, I would expect us to insist on 60 votes and do everything we can to protect the Bill of Rights, because that's our responsibility as elected officials in Congress. You know, when they jump up, as I say, and they say, you know, we have a right, up and down vote, majority rule, I, I hope one of you guys will say, and I think you will, if you want an up and down vote, then you propose a constitutional amendment and you go get your two-thirds vote so we, the people out here in the states and our state legislatures, we get a bite at this apple, too. That's the way it's supposed to work. Well, and, and, and as you know well, it was just a few years ago when the District of Columbia and liberals all over the country went before the U.S. Supreme Court and argued that the Second Amendment doesn't protect anybody's rights, that no individual, no man or woman in the entire country has any right whatsoever under the Second Amendment. I mean, that was a radical and extreme position, and yet that was the position of, the, of Washington, D.C. That was the position of the city of Chicago in the McDonald case, where they argued the states could ban firearms, could confiscate every firearm, and it was, it was consistent with the Constitution. And thankfully, the Supreme Court rejected those radical views that would have effectively erased the Second Amendment from the Bill of Rights. And, and I don't understand the consistent pattern of the left trying to undermine the fundamental protections of our Bill of Rights. It, it preserves the liberty of every American, and, w and we should cherish it and, and stand up against efforts to undermine those liberties. Well, we're out of time. I do understand the left. They're crazy. What I don't understand <laughs> are the Republicans that are going to peel off and vote with them that's what drives me crazy, Senator, and I'm sure it does you, too. I want to thank you uh, for appearing, and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on Thursday. As far as I'm concerned, anybody who votes against you and Lee and Paul and some of the others on this, they're voting against the Constitution. That's the bottom line. Senator, God bless you, my friend. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Mark. Keep shining the light. Keep fighting the fight, and, and together we're, we're, we're going to vindicate liberty. Amen. Take care now. Senator Ted Cruz.